People have been killing each other since the dawn of man. It could be over a mate, a territory, or a religion. Sometimes, though, it's over something so petty that you can't believe that someone lost their life over it. Here are five murders over nothing. Friends often borrow each other's belongings. Clothes, music, and accessories have a long history of being passed around from one friend to another. In the case of Tokyo Palmer, a 17-year-old from New Orleans, he had borrowed an Xbox video game controller from his friend Kareem Richards. Tokyo had been homeless for quite some time and one of the schools he attended had helped him find housing, and he was likely excited to have a place to play video games, like most teenagers would. Kareem seemed happy to oblige at first, but after asking Tokyo multiple times to return the controller, he decided he needed to take more drastic action. He went out on the morning of January 26, 2015 to track down his former friend and settle the dispute once and for all. The unsuspecting Tokyo was walking across a parking lot on his way to his bus stop when Kareem approached and shot him multiple times. Tokyo was transported to the hospital where he died of his wounds. Kareem was eventually apprehended and booked on second-degree murder charges. He pleaded guilty and was sentenced to 20 years in prison. I'm sure you've heard someone say they would kill for tickets to see their favorite music artist perform live. It's what we call hyperbole and it's an exaggerated statement not meant to be taken seriously. Unfortunately for Linda Bolek of Chicago, Illinois, her son, Robert Lyons, was completely serious when he said that about a pair of tickets to see an Avril Lavigne concert in 2008. He begged his mother to make a call to a friend and arrange for him to get Skybox tickets for the upcoming concert, but she refused, which sent Robert into a rage. Of course, this sounds like something any adolescent boy would do, except Robert was 39 years old. He beat his mother on the head with a wine bottle before stabbing her multiple times in the back. He then poured various chemicals over her body, possibly in an effort to destroy evidence. Once that was done, he headed out to a nearby Hooters restaurant for a bite to eat, because being a 39-year-old dude who would kill over Avril Lavigne tickets wasn't enough. He had to turn the creepy up a notch by going to a Hooters for a post-murder meal. He was arrested at the Hooters. He specifically told authorities that his bipolar disorder had nothing to do with the crime, but he's clearly not a mentally stable man, made clear by him being 39, living with his mother and wanting to go to an Avril Lavigne concert. He was sentenced to 40 years for first-degree murder. He was unpredictable. Little things would set him off. That has to win the award for world's biggest understatement. This was the description of Stanley Neese by his landlord in 2011 in Jackson, Kentucky. His reason for saying this was because Stanley had gotten angry over his morning eggs being cold. Seems unreasonable enough on its own, but instead of just heating them back up, Stanley got his shotgun out and left their trailer home in the Breathitt County mobile home community to find his wife in a neighboring trailer. There he killed his wife, Sandra Neese, her 28-year-old daughter, Sandra Strong, and her daughter's boyfriend, Dennis Turner. He also shot and killed two residents of that trailer. When the seven-year-old daughter of those residents asked Stanley not to shoot her, he told her she could leave. Another neighbor had come out to see what was going on, and Stanley shot at him but missed. He then returned to his home where his eggs must not have magically gotten hotter, so he shot and killed himself. It turns out that Stanley had a criminal record involving sexually abusing children and had previously been charged with sodomy involving a child and third-degree sexual abuse. The landlord was also in the process of evicting him. In 2002, Earl Forrest had moved to Missouri in hopes of starting over after doing four and a half years in a California prison for selling meth. 
His friend of 30 years, Harriet Smith, who went by Toddy, begged him to introduce her to his supplier so she could get into the business of drug dealing. Being the good friend that he was, Earl made her a deal that he would make the introduction if she bought him a riding lawnmower. As time went by, and even though Toddy was raking in the dough dealing meth, Earl was still without his lawnmower, so he grabbed his gun and went to her house to confront her. Their friend Michael Wells was there during the confrontation, and Earl shot him in the head before shooting Toddy six times, killing them both. He took $25,000 worth of meth and returned to his own home. When the police arrived at his house to arrest him, Earl initiated a shootout where he shot and killed Deputy Sharon Barnes. He also shot his girlfriend and a sheriff before surrendering, though they both survived their wounds. He was sentenced to death in 2004 and executed in 2016. And he never got his lawnmower. We all have our opinions about neighborhood speeding and the speed bumps that are installed to slow people down. Some people are for them and feel they improve safety in residential areas. Others feel they're a nuisance and could be harmful to their vehicles. Well, Stephen Carr of Fairfax County, Virginia, was tired of people speeding down his street and in 2010 petitioned to have a speed bump installed near his house. It involved traffic engineering studies and consent from his neighbors, most of whom agreed to the proposal. One neighbor, David A. Patton, was not a fan of the speed bump and made his disliking of it well known. He confronted Stephen about it outside of Stephen's home, which led to David being arrested for assault. So, to step up his game, David burst into Stephen's house, tied him up, and shot him in the head. He also tied up Stephen's girlfriend, Rena Cabrera, who was over at the time watching TV when David barged in. Eventually, Stephen's roommate came home, and while David went to chase after him, Rena was able to get to a phone and dial 911. David was arrested in Stephen's backyard and sentenced to 50 years in prison for first-degree murder with another 10 years for abduction for tying up Rena. Fortunately for David, there are no speed bumps in prison. These five people had so much anger inside of them that something as trivial as speed bumps set them off on a path to murder. A video game controller or the temperature of eggs became more important than human life. Thoughts like that can only belong to someone who is a complete and utter monster. If you're the victim of domestic abuse, please reach out to someone for help. Please talk to your local shelter or call the National Domestic Abuse Hotline at 1-800-799-SAFE. That's 1-800-799-7233. Or you can go to thehotline.org to chat with someone online. This website is set up so that at any time, hitting the escape key twice will take you to a Google search page. That way, if your abuser is nearby, you won't get caught seeking help. If you're having feelings of harming yourself or someone else, or even just need someone to talk to, please contact your local mental health facility, call 911, or call the National Suicide Prevention Hotline by simply dialing 988 in the United States. They're available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and will talk to you about any mental health issue you may be facing. Thanks so much for letting me tell you this story. If you enjoyed it, subscribe on whatever platform you're on, hit like, rate us, or leave us a comment. You can also check out our other show, Somewhere Sinister, on YouTube or anywhere that you listen to podcasts. If you'd like to support the show, check out our new merch at Teespring. The link is in the description. Thanks again, and be safe.